Welcome to Pivot, a podcast hosted by Katie Day, where we find out how business owners have been pivoting their businesses to stay relevant and successful. All right. Hey, guys, what's going on? Katie Day with the Moving to Texas team. Today, I am joined with Christina Schaefer from the Houston Association of Realtors, AJR. Um, And I'm really excited to hang out with you today. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm excited to hang out and chat about the things I love, like social media and content and all of that good stuff. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I don't know how long I've known you. I guess I've known you for pretty much the entire time I've been a real estate agent. I don't know. How long have you been at HAR? I have been at HAR. This is my 11th year. I think I've celebrated 11 years with with HAR. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So the entire time I've been a real estate agent, you've been a, um, you know, person at HAR that's been Mm -hmm. helpful to agents and, um, you know, things like that. So I guess let's go into kind of what you do there. Um, And you're, I mean, I know you wear many hats, um, but I guess, you know, just kind of the general job description. Yeah, we we kind of joke that we all wear many hats at HR. We're all doing like two or three different jobs, but <laughs> but it's all good. We enjoy it. So um, my position, I'm the social media manager for HAR. Um, so my I'm daily activity, you know, all of our social media, putting out content, um, keeping an eye on you know our mentions and tags and all of that stuff to just kind of make sure that everything that's being said about HAR is accurate. So kind of protecting our online reputation and social media and all of that. Um, But also um, I started as uh, in the professional development department at HAR. So I was um, an instructor, a full-time instructor for many, many years teaching, um, you know, MLS like matrix classes or tempo and fusion before matrix. But, um, yeah, so teaching MLS and tools and different marketing classes. Um, but what I always enjoyed teaching the most was anything technology and specifically the social media boot camps. That was like the highlight of my month when I got to teach social media boot camps. So, um, a couple of years ago, I think it was a little over three years ago now, um, HR decided that, we really need a full-time social media person. They had had a few accounts set up before, you know, um, a lot of followers on some of those accounts, but the posting and the content was kind of sporadic. Um, there wasn't a real plan behind it. <laughs> so, um, you know, and there was like two or three hands that were in it, but they, they, they finally decided we need somebody that can do this full time. So yeah. uh, it was kind of a natural fit for me to start um, to take over the social media position and, and now that's that's what I'm doing full time. <laughs> but um, the instruct the instructing background really helps because I think when um, you're provide your social media you know person for a brand or a company like HAR, you really also have to kind of be a little bit of customer service. So and I think it, it that's for realtors too. You know you're putting all this content out there. When people go to ask you questions, they expect you to know every answer. So um, the background really helps with what I'm doing now. Well, and it makes a lot more sense now because I've seen you speak at a lot of events and things like that. And you're always, um, you always, I guess, go through things very uh, methodically so that the instructor, you know, kind of background makes sense. Um, <laughs> now when I'm like, oh, when I hear you speak at events and, yeah. you know, on, on uh, Facebook Lives and things like that. So mm-hmm. that's all, funny, yeah. Yeah, all <laughs> makes sense now, all coming together in my head. So I think... Um, and and also one other note that no one's going to really care about unless they're a real estate agent. When you just yeah. mentioned Tempo and Fusion, mm-hmm. I remember back when all of that was being phased out and Matrix was being phased in, how everyone, even me, I was like, I, I, I like Tempo. This is ridiculous. I don't even think I would know how to use Tempo if I had to go back and try today. So right. it's funny yeah. how things change. But Yeah, it, things change. And, and really, whether you're a real estate agent and you know anything about that or not, the, the key takeaway there is things change and you have to adapt. And before you know it, you're going to love the new stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, could, I don't think I could go back now. So. Um, yeah, well, so I think the, the main reason why I wanted to, you know, have you on and, and meet with you and all that is because I feel like, um, especially lately, but since you've come into this position, I feel like the the messaging from HAR as far as uh, social media has, has exponentially grown. Um, I know recently um, there was a video that y'all put out about like the amount of shows that you've done for the Member Focus Monday and all of the mm-hmm. views and, and um, you know, interactions and things like that. And it's been so significant. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that's one thing that I really love about our association as compared to some in other, you know, states and and cities is that um, we provide so much value to the membership, but also to the consumer base, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, our consumer facing app is, you know, awesome. It's super easy to use. Um, It has accurate data directly from the MLS. Um, I'm going down a little bit of a rabbit hole now, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I just feel like the content is is so robust, and that was something yeah. that I honestly wanted to talk to you about because you know I think it's super important. You know, now it was super important last year, and it's going to be very important into the future. So, um, mm-hmm. getting to my point or my question, I guess what um, what did you all like when when COVID started and and everyone started working from home? what did you all kind of determine would be the best kind of course of action moving forward with content and Mm -hmm. information for members and consumers and stuff like that? Yeah. So, um, that's a really good question because there was a, um, a planned, um, change there. We, we really, it was, we kind of just all of the content we kind of had planned, maybe we'll do this this summer or whatever. We kind of put all of that on hold because, um, you know, I think we it's safe to say now we're we're in July and we're still dealing with COVID and changing and all of that stuff, wearing masks and whatever. Um, so it it really shifted everything in our lives and, and we just had to kind of change, right? We had to pivot. Um, so prior to that, you mentioned Member Focus Monday, which is our Facebook live show. Um, we we would have guests booked out three months in advance. You know, we, we would just figure that who do we want to see? Who do we want to hear from? And there were always great speakers. There were always, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, excellent topics, some just specifically for realtors, but some for consumers and realtors. Um, so we would, do, but we would do that. But once, um, you know, mid-March, we just decided we need to slow it down and really start listening to our audience. Like you said, most of our audience is realtors, but we have consumers that follow us as well. And so really listening to our our members and our audience and just seeing what is it that they really want to hear or what is it that they really need to hear that maybe yeah. they don't they don't even know they need to hear yet. So one of the first actually it was the last show that we did in the studio. Um the rest of them have been in my my home studio. Home studio. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so the last one we did in the studio was with um, Dr. Maria Elena Batazzi. Um, she's with Baylor College of Medicine, and they're developing a vaccine for COVID-19. Um, and that was really such a transitional episode because it wasn't dealing with the regular real estate topics. We weren't ignoring what's happening in the world. We were really just kind of paying attention to what's affecting everybody, what do we need to talk about right now? And that um, is to this day, one of our highest viewed episodes. And that really caused us to kind of shift. All right, what do they need to hear now? Um, We had the director of the Houston branch for uh, SBA the morning that they were opening up to accept loans again. So just things like that, planning out content that's the most timely content is really what has made a huge difference for us. And it shows in our numbers, our numbers yeah. on all of our platforms have grown since March. I mean, at an exponential rate. Yeah, super relevant and timely information is mm-hmm. always always good. And it's hard to sometimes figure it out on the fly. So I, I commend you guys for, yeah. for staying <laughs> nimble, um, over the past few months. It can be stressful when you're like, all right, it's Monday and we still haven't, and usually we'll figure it out kind of week to week. It's, you know, we might know a week or so in advance, but there have been some where we're like, all right, it's Wednesday. What are we talking about on Monday? But it, it's really just been because we want to wait until we know what's going to be the most timely topic. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mm-hmm. mean, there's just so many things that are changing in the world with healthcare, with, you know, uh, the real estate industry, just kind mm-hmm. of everything. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah. Um, so I guess, um, kind of along the same lines with HAR as a whole, um, you know, I think, um, HAR did a really good job of, of figuring out like, okay, these are the things that agents will need, you know, these are the things, how can we, how can we transition that to them picking things up or us mailing things or doing things Mm -hmm. online? Um, you know, I'm part of the professional development advisor group. So we met yesterday and we're kind of talking about all the online classes and what Mm -hmm. else can be offered and stuff like that. Um, what do you think has been some of the key, um, I guess, stuff or decisions as far as HAR kind of transitioning from everyone being in the office to everyone working from home? Yeah, and and that's the thing. Um, you know, 
a lot of people don't realize how many hands and how many people were in that office every day, you know, doing what we do, right? Um, but the good thing for us and what I think has really helped us and helped us make a change and make a pivot really early in the game was that we already had a lot of the technologies in place. Mm -hmm. We already had Zoom, you know, we had done classes and meetings on Zoom before. Was it our regular everyday, you know, process? No, but we had it in place. You know, mm -hmm. we we knew how to do things on the go or out of the office. So when, you know, the everything's starting to close down, the initial instinct for some of the leadership was like, okay, cancel all the classes, cancel all the meetings, you know, but um, it kind of took everybody taking a step back and, and Rita, um, our director of professional development, who, you know, very well, she, um, she said, Hey, I can do these classes via zoom. And, oh. and there was the, somebody even said, well, I guess member focus Monday is over. I was like, no, we're just going <laughs> to move it to home, you know? And so there, we had a lot of the technologies in place, so we were able to make a quick shift. Um, so I think that that was really key, but. Um, again, I think as far as the classes and then offering for solutions for um, for our members as far as we have, I think, 12 different places now where they can pick up lock boxes and just supplies that they need when they're in the field, um, doing things like that, but still keeping our staff and our members as safe as possible without having to just reopen the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um Okay, cool. So flipping flipping it around a little bit, what would you yeah. say, um, you know, I think in watching the news and sometimes going on social, you, you kind of go down a little bit of a rabbit hole, um, no. you know, because people, <laughs> <laughs> on occasion, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe once yeah. or twice. But people, yeah. people um, obviously all have a lot of opinions and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of negativity out there. Um, so one thing that I've, I've liked to try to focus on is what would you say is like the biggest positive that you've seen over the past few months? Um, either personally or professionally, but out of out of COVID and out of kind of everything that's that's going on, a positive or a good takeaway. Yeah, I think I think it's hard right now, and social media kind of gets a bad rap because that is where a lot of people go to vent, right? But um, I think what I've seen, and one of the positives I've seen, both personally and professionally, is that people are a little more open there. Um, or maybe a little more vulnerable there than they've been in the past. People openly posting about, you know, getting sick or losing a family member or things like that. Whereas maybe in the past, we just wanted to make social media, you know, sunshine and rainbows, right? But I think people are just kind of more honest and vulnerable than they've been in the past um, and authentic. And I think that's really, I mean, it's really nice to see. Um, obviously, you know, people losing, that's not nice, but you know what I mean? Like just the authenticity that I've seen yeah. from people, it's, that is really nice to see. And I feel like it's kind of steering, um, Facebook or any platform really back into the community mindset. Mm -hmm. That was, mm -hmm. that was the initial goal of those platforms is to just build communities and I think that's, I think that's happening, you know, whether it's a community that you want to be a part of or not. I think communities that are building on those platforms and um you know whatever your thoughts or mindset or whatever it is you're dealing with are, you can find communities on there and i think that's really awesome and it's something that both for me personally and professionally i think has been um really exciting to see um that that shift in how people are on social media um another thing about it is you know it is a place where a lot of people get their news um, some people just they they say, oh, I, I'm tired of the news. I can't watch the news anymore. So unfortunately, they end up getting most of their news from social media. The point I'm trying to make there is if it's a credible source, that's great. You know, that's great that they're getting their information from a credible source and not turning on the TV if they don't want to do that. Um, but of course, there's always the misinformation um, and things that are out there. I think, though, um, this is, again, where I think Facebook gets a bad rap. That used to be something there was a lot of, you know, fake news sources and things like that on on Facebook, but they've really combated that a, a lot and, and not really gotten the praise for it that I think they deserve. So not I'm not saying everything you see on social media is true, but a lot of it now is. So a lot of it's actually credible. So <laughs> one thing I've noticed, too, um, on Facebook is like depending on the, the links, sometimes mm -hmm. if you scroll down, it'll say like partly true 
or like they're like fact checking now like the yeah. kind of not every link obviously because that's like I don't think that's that'd be possible uh, in, <laughs> in the algorithms of the world but like the more viral ones that are being shared mm -hmm. over and over I think once it gets over a certain point is when it gets flagged at Facebook and then you're seeing like if it's accurate or not so I think that it's beneficial especially yeah. you know in an election year especially with everything that's going on um, know. you know it's I think that's super uh, helpful yeah and it, it's good that you notice that a lot of people don't and so they just they get a bad rap so i kind of feel bad for them sometimes <laughs> uh, you know they, a little, uh, i mean a little every now and then but i feel bad and then i think about how much money they make and, oh i know yeah <laughs> but they're um, listening to this right now so i want to make sure i'm saying good things <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, the, the algorithm happy out there yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's funny yeah. and probably true. Um, cool. I, I appreciate you taking the time today to yeah. chat a little bit. Um, I guess, is there anything else that you want to add as far as social media goes in regards to HAR? I know you mentioned Member Focus Monday. So if people were, were looking to you know follow HAR, mm -hmm. where do they go on Facebook, Instagram? What, what, uh, where can people find? Yeah. So, um, on, on Facebook, if you just search HAR.com, you'll find us, um, and on every other platform at HAR members is our handle. That doesn't mean again, that just members follow us because a lot of people just like what we have to put out. Um, member focus Monday is our weekly Facebook live show, uh, every Monday at 9 AM on our Facebook page. Um, so, you know, and we have some really great guests that again, for consumers and realtors alike. This coming Monday, we actually have um, Richard Rothstein who wrote, here, it's right here, um, the, color, <laughs> the Color of Law, uh, which is the forgotten history of how our government segregated America. So that's something I think that anybody would kind of be interested in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've read this book, Katie, but when it was first recommended to me by one of our members actually, um, and I read the title, The Forgotten History of How um, our government segregated America. What? I, I had no idea. So it's really, uh, it's an interesting read for um, anybody who wants to learn a little bit, but that's just one of the many guests that, that we have on that program. And uh, we do have a podcast as well. So if you're not somebody who can sit and watch a computer screen for half an hour or 45 minutes, uh, we, we pull the audio from that and put it on our podcast, the HAR on the move podcast. I love the HAR on the move. And it's normally when I listen to it is when I'm in the car on the move. Yeah. Uh, so it's always uh, great that I, can watch it on that. Yeah, that's what I figured, but that I can watch it in, in either place. So that's yeah. a good move on your part. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> cool. Well, I, again, I super appreciate your time today. Um, it was, it's always good to catch up. Yeah, and, uh, it is. I haven't I haven't seen you face to face in many months now, but I know this is so nice. This is good. <laughs> cool. Well, again, appreciate the time, um, yeah. and I look forward to to catching up um, again soon. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Pivot. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode and follow Katie on social media at MoveMe2TX to stay up to date in all things real estate.